actually the star. <laughs> Hi there, welcome along to Talking Dirt, powered by Monster Energy, the official talk show of the Speedway Grand Prix series. We're up to round four tonight, I'm in the studio here, and we're going to be bringing you all the latest inside track from the Edward Jansart Stadium, which is in Gorzhov in Poland. But in Gorzhov is Kiri Bloor. Thanks so much, Nigel. And yes, welcome to Gorzhov for rounds three and four. OK, so we've moved around 225 kilometers northwest of Wroclaw to this Speedway city. Now, there's not a person here, I don't think, that doesn't know who this man is. It's Edward Yangshash, and even the stadium is named after him. Well, with all that talk of the stadium, it's probably time I headed down there. So coming up, Greg Hancock once again joins us from his home in the USA, taking a look back on last night's action. Kelvin Tatum brings us part two of his Tech Talk series and puts his investigation cap on as he goes to a football ground. Hmm. We open up our vaults to more classic moments and Kiri brings us all the news and views from around the globe in Planet Speedway. And in Warrior Watch, Ty Woffenen catches up with one of his heroes, UFC superstar Dominic Reyes. Well, after the success of the Thai Woofen and Challenge last time around, we've got another one for you. This time it's with winner of round number two, Matt Sajanowski. Siemanko, z tej strony Magic. Mamy dla Was przygotowaną fajną zabawę. Pokażcie mi, ile możecie zrobić żonglerek. Oznaczajcie swoje filmiki na Instagramie i Twitterze. Hashtag Magic Challenge. A my dla Was mamy dwa bilety na Grand Prix. Uwaga, moja. Próba numer 56. <laughs> and two tickets to a round of the FIM Speedway Grand Prix series are up for grabs for the winner, and we'll announce the result at the end of the show. So the action got underway last night at the Edward Jansart Stadium in Gorzhov, and we catch up with the legendary four times world champion. Greg Hancock, back in the USA. Greg, terrific night last night. Who were you meant to watch tonight? Well, I mean, last night was was quite spectacular. And I'm definitely not surprised with the winner. Bartosz owned it completely. And, you know, by all means, the guy's got to be the favorite to do it again tonight. It's just, I would I would find it really, really odd if he didn't take the whole thing. But I expect to see a, a, a bigger challenge coming back from both Ty and probably Magic as well. But, you know, when you look at what Vasulik did, you see, look what Leon Madsen did. You know, everybody's starting to step up their game and you're starting to see a little bit more consistency all around. Yeah, and it's very, very tight at the top of the title race now. And, and this is what we want. We always like a tight title race, don't we? And we've had three of the eight rounds now. Looking forward to tonight. You know, again, another huge meeting which could impact the championship standings big time. Yeah, you said that. You know, I mean, it's it's been um, probably the guy that we, we don't talk about enough. And, and you guys talk about a lot in, in your feed, but it's, it's Freddie Lindgren too, you know. He's almost like the dark horse at the moment and, and keeps playing so, so well. And he's just, he's right there all the time and just shows, you know, you got to be consistent. You got to be there. But track conditions, will the track be the same tonight as it was last night? All these kind of things you have to take into consideration. And, um, you know, a lot of the riders can get beat themselves up after a night like tonight. And a lot of them can also really turn it around if they got a good head on their shoulders. One man I'd like to mention, Greg, is a former world champion, Jason Doyle. Three points from three rides, and yet he finishes on the rostrum as a runner-up. It's remarkable, isn't it, what Doyle did last night? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, after his second ride, I would have more or less written him off because I thought he's he's definitely not picking up any any uh, you know loose grounds from the last uh, two rounds that he had. And, you know, what a hard year for him. But, man, he really showed that you can't – it's never over until it's over. Never give up. you got to keep working hard. He dug deep, and he showed that consistency and determination is the name of the game. And what about the Gorzhov Stadium, the Edward Jansart Stadium as a track? Uh, it's big. It's fast. And the racing lines as well. It proved again last night that it can provide some great racing. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that track, you know what, listening to the interviews last night, too, when you listen to, like, Matty Zagar and you listen also to uh, uh, Nils Christian Everson, they talk about being home riders there for so many years. 
they, they weren't surprised how the track conditions were because it, it was different for a lot of the guys. It was different than the league racing has been all year. But every time we went there for a Grand Prix, I felt the same. It was always different from league racing to what they did on a GP event. And, you know, Bartosz is a local rider. I'm sure that he's been done a few laps there in recent weeks on different types of surfaces. So they know what it takes to make it work just for him, but he still has to ride the bike. Great racing in that, in that stadium. It's a, it's a rad place. It's only a shame that we can't have more fans, but let's hope that 2021 is going to turn it around. So Bartosz Marschlik won last night then, Greg. He's won one world title already. Is he the kind of rider at, what, the age of 25, there or thereabouts, that can go on and win multiple world titles, maybe as many as you? You know what? If you look, the look in his eye tells me that that guy's got a huge, huge future ahead of him. He doesn't seem to be bothered. He doesn't seem to be, like, um, disturbed or, or uh, what do you want to say? Uh, he just doesn't seem to have any issues whatsoever with competition and nerves or anything like that. He, he seems to really thrive on it. So whatever... Thomas Golub was always special for as a Polish rider, so determined, so so special on the track. But I think that Bartosz has a little bit of that as well as a, a really strong mind. He doesn't let things get in his way. I don't know, man. For me, I just think that's going to be your biggest. You're going to be your biggest competitor for a long time. And that dude, no doubt in my mind, he's going to take a lot of titles. Great stuff. So you're going to be sat at home watching the action tonight, Greg. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat. I, I get the nerves, the adrenaline going for every heat again, just like it was from back in the day. And suddenly I kind of have to smack myself and realize that, uh, you know, maybe I, maybe I am sweating a little bit too much. Greg, great to speak to you again. We'll speak to you again next week because I've got, of course, more Grand Prix action next weekend. We'll speak to you when we're discussing Prague and stay safe. Regards to all the family and thanks for joining us, Greg. I sure will. Thanks to all you guys, too. And I really hope that they can work out these tire issues for the next week because it would be fun to see what happens. So thanks very much, Greg Hancock. Absolutely superb to hear from the legend once again. Now let's take a look at the World Championship standings after three rounds ahead of tonight's action in Gorzhov. So despite not making the semi-finals last night, Matze Janowski still leads the World Championship by a point ahead of Bartosz Marslik and two points ahead of Freddie Lindgren. Ty Wolfenden, who also didn't make the semi-finals, 43 points, still in the hunt, five adrift of Janowski, Laguta on 40, and then a bit of a drop down to uh, Leon Madsen on 32 points. Now, let's head into the video vaults. White in the blue helmet color here. It's uh, even oh! more oh! It's a real heavy clutch into the fence. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Clips the back of Pedersen, and he has gone in hard there. That's a nasty fall. Well, thank goodness for an airbag. The leaders with Matty Zegar. Now the battle of the... Oh, oh that's man. a big crash. That is brilliant from wow, Lambert to Lambert get the bike down. Wow, Lambert put the bike down brilliantly, reacted oh. so well, but... Uh, Look where the bike's ended up. Yeah. The outside run again, down the back straight. It's oh, a room. No. Oh, oh, it's gone oh, down. No. Oh, no. Big crash. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Well, well, well. Let's hope the boys are going to be OK here. Yeah. Oh, and then Freddie, look at him in blue. He tries to go. Oh, oh my. Evil Knievel would have been proud of that one. Indeed. Oh. Frick, Frick had nowhere to go as well. Janowski has made the start on Pedersen. Now Killerman is trying the inside. Zagar has blasted around the outside. Whoa! No room for Pedersen. Big crash. That is a nasty one. All three riders down in an untidy heap. Nobody was giving anything there. No room, was there? They all ran out of room. Three abreast. And it's tight. The fence comes back to you there. And nobody was hurt in the making of that film. Now, let's talk Tech Talk with Kelvin Tatum in the latest in his series as he looks into the setup of a Speedway bike. Hi everybody and welcome to uh, Tatum's Tech Talk. Uh, thanks ever so much for your feedback from uh, our first episode, our first show about gearing. Uh, it appears to have gone down really nicely. Um, this time around I'm going to move on to uh, carburation, uh, another area that can actually be adjusted at the track and crucial part of a Speedway bike's setup. Uh, the carburetor is bespoke, it sits on top of the engine here because the Speedway bike's engine is actually laid over. Um, I brought one along with me um, so we can just take a closer look at it. 
there are strict regulations specifically to the size of the hole that goes through there. I'll just pull the slide up and that has to be 34. That was introduced some time ago to actually slow the bikes down. They were 38 previously. But the area that um, I really want to focus on here is at the bottom of the, of the bowl where the main jet is. There's a whole range of sizes of main jets, small right through to quite large. I've got one here, I think, yes, there it is. Um, if we can just focus on it, it's quite small, but it, all the fuel is metered through that hole. Now, the size of the jet is very important because if it's cold, the engine will want more fuel. You introduce a larger jet. If it's hot, like it's been recently, then the air quality is poor. You don't need as much fuel. You need to get that ratio balance between air and fuel spot on. You'll need a slightly smaller jet to keep that engine nice and crisp and running as it should do. Um, riders hat actually at times will tell you that this decision, whether you need to go larger or smaller, can be really very problematic. And at times you'll see some real soul searching going on in the pits to make the right call. Very easy to go down the wrong road here. Carburation, the condition of the carburetor also needs to be in good fettle because there's lots of vibration here and things can actually get worn quite quickly. But uh, an expensive bit of kit, getting the right jet, which is not so expensive with the right size, absolutely vital to make sure that your engine is running at its absolute, absolute optimum. And as I say, uh, an area that can manipulate the uh, Speedway bike setup during the event. Carburation, vital. In Warrior Watch this week, three times world champion Ty Woffenden looks at a sport he loves, UFC. And he caught up with one of his heroes, Dominic the Devastator Reyes. Yeah, good to have you on. Thanks for thanks for joining us. And um, yeah, what what has the whole year been like with this crazy, crazy stuff that's going on? It's been interesting, man. There's been a lot of, um, especially with mixed mixed martial arts. You know, we're we're always like, grabbing each other and wrestling and fighting. So it's definitely a challenge uh, getting training partners to to train that you could trust that don't have COVID or, you know aren't interacting with all kinds of people or it's, it's interesting man it's like a whole screening process just to have a training partner what's what, what are you going on next what's your next fight uh, i'm fighting in five weeks i have a okay. title title fight uh not with john because he he vacated the division so it's uh pretty much set the belt down and said uh whoever wants it come get it did he, did he step out of the division after you kicked his ass the other week yep <laughs> That's why. <laughs> so is that quite, is that, is that pretty close for you? Like as far as like fin like jumping out and then straight back in five weeks or like however long later? Yeah, it's a short camp. It's definitely a short camp. Yeah. Um, most camps are around eight to ten weeks. Yeah, we're doing one in six. So, how much time did you have off after the last fight? Uh, six months. Or did you just okay? I, I train pretty much all the time, but it's the intensity. You know, it's it's a whole other intensity yeah. when you know you have something coming up, so. Yeah. Um, it, I used to play uh, American football. I went to college to play American football. So my brother owned his own gym over here, and I was really frustrated because I didn't get, like, picked up by the NFL, and I had a lot of, like, anger inside of me. Yeah, one really door closes, and one door closes, another one opens. Absolutely. A lot of people are closed to other possibilities. And they oh, for sure. Why? People's biggest like brick wall in front of them is their own. A hundred, hundred percent. Everything yeah. in there. It's all in there. Some people think like that, and some people don't. Like some people will have look at a failure and dwell on it and be like, "Oh man, like I've, I've failed." A lot of people have a hard time with confidence, like true confidence. They think it's manufactured. Yeah. It's like, nah, man. I feel this deep in my heart. Like you, nobody in the world could tell me otherwise. Like this, this is what I'm. My entire being is on this. Like. Yeah. You don't know what I do. You don't know what I think about. Like this is my entire life. Get the hell out of get out of my face with your your weak minded self. You know it's, fr it's, fr it's it's frustrating though that like you know being confident is in that same realm as being like cocky or arrogant or whatever word you want to find for it. Mm -hmm. Because I think all like all good athletes 
if you don't have that, you're never going to be successful. Like you have to have, you have to be, at least believe in yourself. And if you can't say it, then you obviously don't believe in yourself. Ty, man, thank you for talking to me today, man. I appreciate it. Hopefully, if I'm ever in your country, we can get together and hang out. That'd be really awesome, man. Yeah, for sure, dude. Thanks for thanks for your time, and um, yeah, good luck for the for the title fight. Go get it. God bless, man. Peace out. See you, brother. See ya. Wow, well, you definitely wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of that guy. Okay, well, as we build up to the action here in Gorzhov for round four, let's take a look back at the news with Planet Speedway. We start the week in Poland, where the current extra Liga leaders, Lesno, are still very much in control. Ahead of the final three regular season matches, Zygorna Gora need just a point at Lugno on Sunday to confirm their spot in the top four alongside league leaders Lesno and second place Gorzhov, who are already certain of playoff qualifications. Speedway Grand Prix star Magic Janowski sent off a ferocious challenge from world champion Bartosz Maslik to claim his second Polish championship in Lesno last Monday. But in sadder news, Poland's first Speedway world champion, Jerzy Szesznikow, has passed away at age 71. In Sweden, Danish ace Niels Christian Emerson warmed up for this weekend's Enya Gorzhov Speedway Grand Prix rounds with a 15-point maximum as Indianana won 50-40 away to Piritama in the Swedish Elite Syrian on Tuesday. The spotlight last week also fell on the sport's youngest riders as the team under-21 World Championship final took place in Denmark. Despite the absence of Dominic Kubera through an injury, the young Polish side dominated the evening despite the best efforts of Denmark, Great Britain and Sweden. The Poles ran out winners on 46 points, Denmark second on 42 points, and Great Britain on the final podium place with 29 points. Thanks for that, Kiri, and we'll see you later in the show. Now, Kelvin has gone all detective on me. In the first of a two-part series, he's taking a look at the subject of rain-offs, a nightmare when nothing's happening and we're all looking around and the rain's coming down and will we get racing, won't we get racing? What do we talk about? What do you talk about? Uh, well, Kelvin is taking a look at whether a solution can ever be found to that problem. I'm on a mission. I've made my way to Tottenham Hotspur Football Club, um, one of the most advanced uh, football stadiums in the world. And uh, it's an inclement day, which is uh, very appropriate because uh, in Speedway, as a rider, as a, a team manager, as a uh, pundit, it's so frustrating when meetings are cancelled or postponed. And I just sense in there could be the answer to all our problems. Hi Darren, thanks ever so much for inviting me over. It's uh, such an impressive environment, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It must be a it must be a real privilege coming here to work every day. Yeah, there's worse places to work, that's for sure. <laughs> but it's the summer and you've got the lights on. And how long will they be on for? Will that be something that you, they'll be on all day or they move at certain moments? I presume there'll be times. What we do is we literally replicate the sun throughout the course of the year. So obviously in July, it gets right above us. As you dip into the winter months and- Yeah, yeah, the sun's the, lower in the sky. To the, to the shortest day of December the 20th, then yeah. um, we're in total shade. And that's one of the main reasons, or one of the reasons why the, the, in the depths of winter the, the pitch still looks in pristine Absolutely. condition? Absolutely. All top clubs will have lights of some form. Yeah. We're the first anywhere in the world to have a full system that covers the whole pitch. Yeah. So the track lifts up, they'll come out from underneath the stand, then the, the, the wheels open up and they roll out under the pitch. So in the midst of winter, we have six rigs. So when you look at why a football pitch, in January now is the same as what it is in August, that's because we can recreate the conditions. Obviously we, we, we both know Speedway, you're a fan of Speedway. Could this be replicated on a Speedway track? Could you use this? Yeah, I guess lighting technology in Speedway is probably a little bit, a bit more tricky and a little bit more difficult on, on what you'd actually achieve from it. Yeah. Um, bearing in mind Speedway, you want a little bit of moisture in it. What these lights will do is actually dry the surface out more. Um, would you use them as a drying aid? No, we've probably got a few more toys to show you okay. that would help in drying, um, drying a surface more than what the lights would be. 
It's very much about growing grass, these. Well, look what I've found. Um, Darren's out doing some other business. I've got rid of him for a moment, and I'll tell you what, this looks really interesting. Huge hair dryers. You imagine these going around the track, drying the tracks out, getting the meetings on, and cost effective. Not too much money at all. And I'll tell you what, this looks very interesting indeed. Could be part of the problem solved. we're looking at and discussing and possibly thinking about introducing some synthetic materials to speedway tracks. It might be interesting to know what your thoughts are, whether that could be used or any element of that could be used as uh, an oval circuit. Historically speedway, we go back to the 80s, you would have rode in some of them where we've done indoor speedway yeah. on boards. Yes. As long as there's, there's, there's grip, but there's traction. So it's understanding what materials are out there and what surfaces are there and what, what you can play with where the guys can go out and even if it's wet, yeah. with the same tyre, not like Formula One where you've got to put a wet tyre on, where you can go and still get traction. It's not rocket science to understand what it's about. It is probably scientific to understand what can make it work. Football we've played for years, go back to those 80s, Put, and you just saw sand thrown on football pitches. Yeah. Now we're playing on total sand. Um, as I say, we, we have had issues and we do have issues with speedway tracks. You know, we get sudden downpours and the meeting's off. Um, and it would be terrific to think that there are materials out there and there are people that can understand that, that can actually implement it to the tracks. It looks to me like there are possibilities in that area. Well, there are, Kelvin, and there's probably one to add as well, is there's some simple air blowers that's readily available in the golf market and they are absolutely high powered air movement, low level. So for example, I remember the Speedway World Cup at Peterborough probably yes. 10 years ago. Yes. Or two or four, I think it was four races to go and it was just a lake. Yeah. Whereas if that torrential downpour had stopped, two trips around with the tractor and a blower to blow that water off, that actual surface water, right. you've then got something you can work with. When it's holding water, somewhere like Peterborough would be an example, where it's holding water within the clay. Yeah, there's no banking it's very there, difficult. poor drainage, yeah. And it's got no natural fall off. Go somewhere where you've got a big bank, the old Bradford, that yep. you all know well, that would drain for fun within minutes to the, to the inside anyway. Yeah. So sometimes it's knowing the track and knowing how it, what help you can give it mm. to aid its drainability characteristics. And not all of them are expensive. Something oh. like that is very cheap. That sounds very interesting indeed. Great stuff, Kelv. I bet you didn't tell anybody you're an Arsenal fan, though, did you? Right, let's head over to the Edward Jansart Stadium now, ahead of tonight's action, and here's Kiri. Thanks so much, Knight, and welcome to Gorzhov. Yes, we are on the infield. Well, it's day two, officially round four of the Grand Prix season. The sun is shining, the weather is beautiful, and the fans are streaming in. Well, alongside me is Hans Nielsen. Hans, welcome and thank you so much for joining me. Pleasure. Well, a lot happened. Obviously, you represent and work with the Danish riders on our Grand Prix series, and we've got a full team of Danish riders, four riders out there. So let's get straight into the thick of it. Heat one for Anders Thompson. It threw up, uh, well, an incident for sure. Yeah, that was a very bad start. Obviously, uh, for Anders, he, uh, he was really geared up, you know, on his home track and everybody expecting him to do well, and uh, including himself, of course. And then having uh, having the, the crash into the first corner, uh, getting hooked up, um, you know, that was a, a great shame. And obviously, he uh, he had to change his bike uh, because uh, he got bent, so he had to take his spare bike. And, uh, you know, that was a bike he knew as, as well as the first one. So so that was a shame. So that was a really bad start to the, to, to the, to the evening. Yeah, it was a tough night for him, picked up just a, a limited amount of points, but certainly showed that he had some impressive form there anyway, waiting to come out. Yeah, certainly, but I'm, I think we're going to see a, a totally different Ennis tonight, you know, with his uh, proper bike, he's got the engine back in a proper frame again, and uh, the one he was supposed to ride yesterday, so I think we're going to see a, a, a different Ennis to tonight. Uh, obviously, the expect, expectation was there yesterday, and he was expecting to do really, really well, not only himself, as I said, but, but everybody else. Um, so, so a little bit disappointing, I think, performance yesterday, but I'm, I'm sure tonight is going to be a totally different story. OK, well, we'll wait and see tonight for Anders. Now, you had a busy, busy old night. Mickelson coming out into Heat 3. It was an impressive performance. 
It certainly was. Yeah, we, we after that, obviously, we expected great things from uh, from Mikkel. But yeah, obviously, it was a difficult night for me because I was at the stand. You know, I couldn't sort of be involved at all. But uh, so it's you know frustrating. You know, sitting up there and not being able to to do anything. But uh, you know, at least I'm here and uh, watching them and uh, obviously in great enjoyment. But. He slipped up a little bit the last few races, uh, not very good at the start, and uh, so so hopefully he's uh, just that he's back a bit for tonight and uh, and uh, get up in the points tonight. Well, as you said, more to come from Anders. What is the future for Mickelson? Uh, what's his potential like? Well, I think it's great. Obviously, winning the European Championship last year, he really proved himself and he could stand the pressure. Uh, this year, he's been, uh, you know, uh, mostly having a great season. You know, the beginning of the year, especially, uh, had a little, a little sort of uh, lean patch and. Uh, of late, but but uh, you know potentially he's going to be uh, he's going to be out there uh, soon, I'm sure, and uh, hopefully he can get uh, back in it now and uh, be uh, hopefully close to that top six by the end of, uh, of the series. So, uh, but even if not, I'm sure you know he's still young and I'm sure he'll get up there eventually. Okay, well a quick word on Niels. I think the gates last night really throw up the winds. You know, once they were on the red gate, they were really pulling up the winds. But Niels also had an impressive heat. Yes, that's right. I mean, he, he was a little up and down yesterday, and obviously uh, expecting more. But uh, but he was he had a, a couple of good gates. Uh, but generally, I think everybody was talking about the track being uh, quite different to what it normally is uh, in league meetings. And obviously, that hit uh, the home riders more, like Anders and and and, and Nils. Uh, I know it didn't uh, so much for master, but <laughs> he could ride anything. But so so there wasn't so much uh, home advantage. But so they were sort of fighting along and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, fighting for each point and uh, and uh, trying to get the bikes obviously adjusted for the different tracks. So he's probably through them more, expecting okay. the track to be a certain standard, and it wasn't. So, so hopefully tonight uh, they say the track looks different tonight, a little bit more like normal. So hopefully um, he'll get right in the points tonight. Yeah, well, we'll talk about the track in just a sec uh, with Ty. So. Leon, it's never enough for Leon. Unless he's won, it's never enough. But the semi-final was certainly impressive. Yes, he really flew out the, out the start of that gate three there. And uh, and he was um, not really feeling at home the first few races. Uh, the, the track also, I think, threw him a little bit. And uh, not quite making the starts you were expecting to. Uh, just picking a couple of bad lines, you know, especially the one with uh, Anders passing on the inside. I just swallowed the track and he went a little too wide and uh, made room for Anders. So, a couple of mistakes on the way, but you know, then you thought, ah, he's in the semi, and he go, he, he go in and win the win the semi really uh, with a great arm margin, great start. So we thought maybe he'll do it in the final again. So you know, although he only qualified with with the nine points, he, he could do and go and win it on the night. And obviously, with the new point system, it doesn't matter how many points you collect during the league. Yeah, exactly. That's what me and him spoke about earlier. It really is just getting to the semis and the finals. And all the gap is, although the gap is 16 points at the moment, into the semis, into the final, that gap closes up real quick. Yeah. Okay, now Danish Speedway. Well, at the moment, we've talked about four of our riders in the Grand Prix series, and they're all Danish. At the moment, the Danish Speedway as a whole is very, very strong. Yeah, it's pretty strong. Yeah, we're doing quite well. Obviously, it's uh, all this Corona thing is uh, is hard for everybody. Uh, but luckily, you know, the, the four Danes we have here tonight, they've been able to ride in the in the best league in the world, the Polish league. Um, you know, it's a problem for those that aren't, and and so and that includes obviously a lot of our Danish riders riding the Danish Super League. And unfortunately, that hasn't st uh, started yet. But certainly, the crop we have here, we've got great potential, and hopefully, they'll be there for for quite a few years to come and uh, get up in the mix and hopefully win some titles. Yeah. Hopefully, indeed. Well, the crowd is at a limited capacity, but trust me, these guys out here make so much noise. Now, the track last night was sort of ever-changing, but one man that can certainly tell you more is at Ty. I'll hand over to him now. Thanks, Kiri. Yeah, we're out here on the track, and uh, just over here, coming into the corner, yesterday, there was a, a lot of ruts, especially in the middle of the corner here. It was quite rough and bumpy. It was quite a, um, quite a technical track. Um, but today it's been packed down a lot more. Um, it's definitely uh, definitely different to yesterday. You can see a nice little dirt line that'll probably create um, on the outside. Um, this here on the inside was a lot a lot more. There was a lot more material here yesterday. It was really deep, um, quite like loose and dry. And today it's a little bit of a different track. So uh, you know you probably expect to see some other riders going a little bit better than they did yesterday, and, and vice versa. But the the starts look like they always do. It's uh, a little bit of material there. My mask keeps falling off. Um, and uh, all of them look very similar. You know, gate one to four, there, there's not much discrepancy between them. Um, and that corner against this corner is, uh, is is the same as far as like a little bit of dirt on the outside. 
um, pretty slick on the inside. So from my point of view, looking forward to getting out there. And um, yeah, back to you, Kiri. Thanks so much, Ty. Really interesting to hear from a rider's point of view. Now, very interesting here. Historically, Redgate has always worked here very well. But our first heat out, so our first set of four heats, and we had a win of each different gate. But then as we went through the night, Redgate really did just storm ahead. So how different is the track when the riders are normally here for their leagues to how it was last night? Well, from what I hear, yeah, from what Ty says as well, obviously it's going to, I think, suit the guys that are able to pass. And obviously that it might play into Leon, uh, Leon Madsen's hands tonight. Uh, he said, OK, Trevor, but he's in certain an even better uh, passer. So, so uh, the Travers tonight could, you know, be careful because there could be some passing tonight. Uh, so hopefully some better racing as well. Well, tapes up are in less than half an hour across the board in all of your TV channels. So if you could predict anything, I, I saw Leon earlier. I've never seen Leon look so tired, but I know one man that's so determined is Leon. If you could predict one of your riders or any of the riders to be on the podium, who would it be? Well, if I've got to pick from my riders, yeah, certainly Leon. He's uh, he's, uh, he, he's he's got to be the one. Uh, he just showed in that semi-final yesterday that he can uh, possibly go all the way. Uh, he's and, a fighter. Uh, yeah, <laughs> hopefully. And I think, uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, Nils Christian with uh, riding uh, on his own track again and be, maybe being uh, a little bit like uh, normal, you know, might, might push on for that top three as well. But obviously, smart think he's going to be trouble again tonight, I'm afraid. <laughs> Yeah, indeed. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us on Talking Dirt. Now, the fans here, doesn't matter how small, are just absolutely incredible. So as they get ready for the action, I know so are you. So Nigel and Calvin, I'm handing back to you in the studio. Thanks for that, Kiri. Great stuff as always. Now, let's take you back to the Magic Yanofsky Challenge. Let's take a look at some of the entries. Great stuff. Thanks very much to everybody who took part. And congratulations to our winner this week for two Grand Prix tickets, Benjamin Basso. Well done to you and enjoy the round that you decide to go to. Any good at that, Kelvin? Oh, keep your uppies. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, did you do uh, it when you were at Tottenham? I did. I had a word with Jose and um, he offered me a contract. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all, all in the hands of the, the agent one, at the yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the special one. Yeah, good stuff, <laughs> good stuff. No, I had a good day. Yeah, brilliant. It was a great feature and more of that next week in Talking Dirt, powered by Monster Energy as well, part mm. two to come next week. Uh, but let's take a look back at last night's Speedway Grand Prix now, Kelvin. Mm. And uh, first of all, Bartosz Marslik wasn't really a massive surprise. It's his own backyard and he, he, he just did the business, didn't he? He came up with a, a champion's performance. Um, he just got beaten once by Wolfenden in Heat 19, which was uh, a real tear up between the two champs. Um, but there's no question the final was a thriller right to the chequered flag. Jason Doyle suddenly turning his fortunes around, coming on strong. And a touch relieved, I think, Bartosz, and exhausted as, he, as they all sort of fell over each other. <laughs> it was a little bit embarrassing, but uh, nonetheless, uh, he delighted uh, the home fans. Yeah, absolutely magnificent. Now, the talking point before last night, of course, was about the tyre situation. The analyst tyre wasn't available no. uh, for this round, Kelv. Uh, what are your thoughts? What's your take on that? Obviously, uh, Janowski and Laguta didn't really trouble the, the leaderboard last night. Uh, obviously, uh, Magic still leads the World Championship. Yes. But what are your thoughts on that? Uh, it's confusing, you know, disappointing for those guys that had chosen to use them, particularly the guys that were successful in Wroclaw. You know, if you've got leading the World Championship and you're using a tyre that you feel comfortable on and then it's withdrawn, of course, you're going to feel a little bit put out about that. Uh, they are accustomed to using the Martas, so it's not too much of a change back. But I think it's something that needs to be resolved fairly quickly. And fingers crossed uh, that, you know, by the time we get to the Marquetta Stadium in Prague, that uh, things are 
are clearer on that score. Fingers crossed, yeah. Mm. Now, uh, we'll do what we did last time. We'll take a look at some onboard footage as well. Absolutely. And this helps analyse the track, the lines of the track. And we've got a really good one here. Mm. Uh, Max Frick. Uh, Coming out of gate two, yeah. he's, he's, he's roared away there, but he's got a certain Mr. Smarslick in the race who comes charging across from the outside. Again, you can see how quickly Smarslick came into view. He made a good start initially. He had the better of Limbach on the inside. It looks like he's fairly comfortable. Of course, Smarslick has got slightly more pace. He's working the outside. He's got the best run of the race. But now, uh, Freddie Lindgren bursts into the action. Clearly had a run on Max, who was possibly taken a little bit by surprise there and will be frustrated to have allowed uh, the Freddie Lindgren to come through. But nonetheless, again, we've got good footage giving us a, a good indication of of how all action it is out on track. But uh, the two fellas in front of him, strong contenders. Absolutely right. Big flat track, Kelv. Something suggests to me that that might have suited you in your career. Uh, there's a little bit of banking. It's not completely flat, but not as banked as somewhere like Torren or Bradford in the past, but certainly good stuff from, uh, from the boys there. And nice to see it from, from that perspective. Yeah, very much so. Um, so the race for the title now. We oh, yeah. alluded to it a little bit earlier, and, and we've seen the standings earlier in the show. So tight at the top now. We yeah. love that in the Grand Prix, don't we? A, t a real tight title race. But could we be approaching a time where maybe two or three might pull clear? It's possible. If, if we get those guys doing the same as last, uh, last night, there's no question that that could happen. But I was pleased to see Doyle up there. But Smarslik, you know, Janowski hanging in there. Freddie Lindgren just going about his business. It's all on. And I think, uh, again, Gorjov served up a great delight of Speedway. I'm sure it'll do tonight as well. Yep. Well, I think we're about ready to go to the commentary box for the World Feed commentary tonight. Looking forward to it, Kelv? Yeah, can't wait. You up for it? I am indeed. Let's do it. And thanks for watching Talking Dirt, powered by Monster Energy. We'll be back next week, remember, because it's back-to-back -back Grand Prix weekends. Thanks for all your competition entries again. Keep those coming in in the build-up to our next issue. And we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot.